What is good everybody, today we're taking a look at the brand new WWE Ultimate Edition Coliseum Collection Wave Number 4 figures. And in this set we do have Brett the Hitman Heart and Jim the Anvil Nightheart. What's wild is it feels like yesterday we had the Wave Number 1 with Terry Funk and Hulk Hogan and now we have Wave Number 4 in front of our faces. So I'm pretty excited for this and this is going to be our 4th Ultimate Edition Bret Hart when it's all said and done. You have the 1st Edition, you have the Target Exclusive Legends, you have the Coliseum Collection which is right here, and then you have the Monday Night Wars Ultimate Edition. So Bret Hart adding up the figures here lately, man. And essentially, this figure right here, or these two figures in this pack, are Ultimate Edition upgrades of the Elite 42 Jim the Anvil Nightheart, and the Elite 43 Brett the Hitman Heart figures. And I also want to give a huge shout-out to Mattel for sending this pack our way. Huge shout-out to Mattel, Mattel Creations, and the Elite Squad for sending this Coliseum Collection our way to review for you guys. This set is actually going up for order today on MattelCreations.com, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central Time, and 12 p.m. Eastern. So if you guys want this set, it is going up today, man. Should be intriguing, man, on the less. Here's the front viewing window that's not a window whatsoever, so I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. You have an embossed Brett the Hitman heart here, and if we spin it to the side, you got the WWE block logo, Jim the Anvil, and Brett the Hitman in this nice artistic sort of poster deal going on. On the other side, you have a nice full body poster shot of Jim, and then on our other side, it just says Mattel Creations Ultimate Edition, and then on the top, it says the pink and black attack. Kind of looks like it. Am I tripping? It looks like it's out of line. Maybe that's just my eyes. Nonetheless, I'm going to pull the individually packaged figures out of here. So when you pull this flap out, you guys will see it says Brett Hitman Heart, and then the and symbol has the heart around it, which I think is a very sweet touch. And then, of course, it has both their names there, and you open it up, and of course, I did not get the black carded editions. There are actually going to be chase versions, similar to Sergeant Slaughter, where these guys are going to be on black cards rather than the blue card that you see here. Now, what would have made me sick is, all, I mean, I guess it would have been really cool if these were black card, but I'm kind of glad they're not black card, because now I don't feel so much pain when I open them because if this was the Chase Black card versions, the video would end right here. I'm just kidding. I would open them, but it's it's just funny to think about. But you do get some extra stuff in here. I don't remember them having crowd signs on the last one, so that is cool there. But you can pull the figures out here, and again, these are individually wrapped. So here is Hitman Heart. Hitman Heart. Kind of a cool name, though, not gonna lie. Hitman's actually, a, that's a that's one of the best wrestling nicknames ever, but it also comes with this divider sheet or piece of cardboard that, that works as an interview background or something, Coliseum Collection there. And then we do have Jim back here, which looks good. So there you go. You get both figures individually packaged, which I, I like this about the Coliseum Collection, man. They also look really good on, on the wall, all men on card, but... So here's Bret Hart in his individual packaging. He's standing here. You got the front viewing window there. Shout out to my man Steve over here. Then spinning around, you have these, like, nice wrestling card animations with a little cutout print. Accessories included. Twist them, turn them, battle them, the Ultimate Collection, and then we have all the different Coliseum Collections on the back here, which I think is awesome, and I love how they're embossed. That's pretty cool. And then for Jim over here, you got him standing on the side, and then on the back, same deal. A little card, accessory included. Same stuff going on here, man. But with that being said, let's go ahead and crack these guys out of their individual packages, put them on the rotating base, and take a look at Brett the Hitman Heart and Jim the Anvil Nightheart. So here's our Coliseum Collection Wave Number 4 Heart Foundation Ultimate Edition 2 pack out of the packaging, man. We have Brett the Hitman Heart and Jim the Anvil. I feel like I've said those nicknames and their names a lot in this video, so from now on, I'm not saying it. But these look pretty damn good, man. We're going to get through their accessories, of course. They are a tag team, so we're going to cover their accessories together like we do in most tag team set reviews. So we are going to take a look at their accessories together, and then we'll take a closer look at Anvil, and then we'll take a closer look at Bret Hart, get into some comparisons, and then we'll see where these Coliseum Collection Ultimate Editions sit in our collections. And then also, at the end, I'm going to rank every Ultimate Edition Coliseum Collection figure from worst to best, and we'll see how these stack up. So that being said, man, let's dive into their accessories, and then we'll get into the figures themselves. So getting into the accessories that you get with the Coliseum Collection Series number 4, man, I have Jim Nightheart's accessories over here and Bret Hart's accessories over here. And this is what they come with out of the packaging. So these titles are, in, are underneath them individually in the packaging. These are the head sculpts they're wearing, the sunglasses Bret's wearing. And I'm pretty sure both of them had one fist and one mic holding hand, but I did put the fist back in here. But these little boxes right here are, come stored underneath the figures in the packaging. And when you open this up, it reveals all of their accessories. So they come very neatly secured in here, which looks really clean. I like the aesthetic of this, and I don't know, it just increases the experience when unboxing the figures. And then here's Bret Hart's, which is very similar. You get the world tag title on there, but let's shut the hell up and dive into their accessories. All right, man, so here's all the accessories out of the little box that it comes with. But I guess we can start on the left side and then we'll move to the right side. Now, off the top of the dome, I don't remember what the Elite 42 anvil head sculpt looks like, but this looks pretty good, man. I like the true effects on here. The beard looks fantastic and the sculpt and whatnot. And I think this does favor him. I don't have any issues with this. I actually quite like this head sculpt a lot. I think they did a really good job here. The second head sculpt is actually a brand new head sculpt with the gritting teeth, I'm pretty sure. And this is a 
really nice sculpt as well. The teeth look really good. I think they did a great job right there. They didn't give him all placky chan looking, you know, so he looks pretty good there. I like the eyebrow shape. I really like this likeness. I like the facial expression too. He's gritting right there. That could be an in pain head sculpt. That could be like a growling at a guy. I like that a lot. And then our last expression here, the yelling expression, I'm pretty sure came on the Elite 74 Collector's Edition Jim the Anvil Nightheart. And it looks good too. I like the wide open yelling face. You got the tongue in there. It's it's a good expression, man. His, uh, his eyebrows are killing it, man. Kind of gives me like Bam Bam Bigelow vibes. Kind of give me like, I don't know, kind of the likeness or something, but haircut looks good. The scope looks good. I think these look really nice, man. Great job here on the anvil. Now, he also comes with sunglasses here. You guys will notice he comes with his shades here, and they are a nice sculpt as well. And, you know, you put them on the deck. Why can't I not grip that? Good God in heaven, but, you know, you can grip that. You pull it down on the face right there, and look at that, man. It fits very nice and snug. You can hold him by the beard right there. That is good stuff. I like that. That's, that's good stuff right there. The shades fit pretty perfectly, if you ask me. And then we also get a pair of World Tag Team Championships. Now, I am i don't know exactly, but I'm pretty sure these are my favorite executions of the World Tag Team Championships of all time. And I want to say in the past, we've either got these silver-plated or gold-plated. I don't think we've ever had this dual tone here. This is, I do believe this is the first time ever that we're seeing dual-plated World Tag titles with the silver plates with the gold finishes on top. And it looks really good. It even has the block logo. Looks very clean. I mean, it's the same sculpt I'm pretty sure that we've seen over the years, but it looks very clean. They did a heavenly job here. Just excellent. Great execution here. And they look so good, man. These are very clean. Hopefully this will continue as we continue to get these World Tag titles in the future. But they did an outstanding job on these. These look fantastic. And then the second versions of these tag championships right here, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, I'm pretty sure this is the lore of the situation. These tag team championships are based on the tag team championships that the LJN figures came with of the Heart Foundation and the two-pack. And these are like the Mattel equivalent. So they're recreating those figure championships here. And so they're based off the 84 title, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I could be wrong about that. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But they have the silver plates in there with the brown straps. And if you're unaware, the Coliseum Collection is supposed to... Be, I'm going to mention this again probably later, but the Coliseum Collection is based on their original LJN releases. However, that's sort of true, but not true because I'm pretty sure didn't like the LJN Heart Foundation have black boots. So I don't know if it's exactly what they were going for. I think it's like a nod to it, but it's not exactly, you know, it's not an exact replica or copy, but these are cool. I think it's a good nod to the LJNs. And then for Bret Hart's head sculpts, man, I am not a huge fan of this head sculpt. I think the other ones have a little bit more likeness, but I don't know, man. It's just, it, it just continues to go around. I think that Bret Hart's likeness is just one of those that they can't seem to capture. I really thought they made a stride when they made the Elite 94 Bret Hart. I thought that those head sculpts were pretty good, but it's like he just gets lost. That There's just certain superstars that they don't quite capture quite right, and Bret Hart's just one of those guys that they have never really been able to nail. But, I mean, they're not horrendous. I, I think they kind of look like, I don't know if they were trying to CGI Bret Hart younger. This is what they kind of look like. I don't think they look bad, necessarily, but it it's not like an absolute nailing of the likeness, if that makes sense. But you have three different head sculpts here. The expressions are also very weird. They're very similar, all of them. So you have like him looking straight on, just sort of stoic. You have this one where his mouth's kind of open and he's looking to the right slightly. And then you have him looking to the right slightly with the smirk. I don't know. They're just kind of, they're kind of weird head sculpts. They're not, they're not my favorite, but they're not, I mean, they're not egregious, but they're just certainly just not special or legendary in any way. Now, I did forget to mention that Bret Hart also comes with shades here, which look good, and they're pretty, uh, they're not like exactly super tough, but they're not super flimsy, so, you know, you just kind of PYP pick your poison there, but you slide on the shades here, and one of his head sculpts did come with a little rubber band to hold him on the head sculpt, but I don't think it's necessary to have that. I do like to keep that most of the time, just so they don't fall off, because if you draw drop these, you could lose them. But yeah, it doesn't, it, he definitely looks better with the glasses on there, I will say that. He definitely, he looks a lot better with the sunglasses covering the eyes, because I think it hides the likeness, because the facial shape is more accurate than the eyes, probably. And then for interchangeable hands, Jim the Anvil comes with interchangeable fists. He comes with world going around mic holding slash weapon wielding hands. And then he comes with pointer fingers to tell you that he's number one, and to point at you and tell you to shut the hell up. And then for Bret Hart's interchangeable hands, we do get the Ricochet Kawhi Leonard hands, which, it's very weird because these look a little bit shorter and more accurate than the previously released. They don't look as long as the Kawhi Leonard Ricochet mold that we talk about all the time. And if that's the first time you're hearing that, you're probably like, what the hell is this guy talking about? But it's not really, it's kind of hard to catch you up on the lore now, but I'll show you an example. So this is the hand that comes on this Ultimate Edition, and then if you look at the Survivor Series Elite from a couple years ago, here is the, pre this is like the Ricochet Kawhi Leonard hand. Look at this. They've adjusted, am I tripping? They've adjusted this. It looks a little bit thicker, a little bit shorter, more realistic, not as long. Like, look at those fingers, man. They're not 
Roman Skinny. They actually have some nice sculpt there. Look at that right there, man. I think they've changed. This is a new hand mold or something like that. They they are no longer Ricochet Kawhi Leonard. They're adjusted Ricochet hands. Look at that. They're slightly shorter. They're more realistic. Wow. What a what a discovery. I want to say, didn't this happen not too long ago in a review we did? Somebody remind me. But Bret Hart also comes with mic holding slash weapon wielding hands. And last but not least, he comes with interchangeable fisted hands to beat the hell out of people. So getting into the amble, man, starting out with a head sculpt again. We looked at it. I think it looks pretty good. I can't find my Elite 42 head sculpt for my Elite 42 anvil. I believe it's Elite 42. I hope it's not Elite 44. Or is it Elite 44? What a jackass. It is Elite 44. Oh, man. Anyway, what an idiot. Nonetheless, man, going down, we do have this new singlet mold, which looks really good. I like the chest hair on here, and this is a brand new singlet, I'm pretty sure. This doesn't look like the Sergeant Slaughter one, I don't think. Do believe this is brand new, but I don't... The one thing I don't like about this, man, is they always give them, like, Mankind and guys like that, man, they need to have, like, the not as ripped up arms, man. And I know we talk about, you know, action figures are supposed to be, like, a little bit step above, right? Like, obviously, Roman Reigns or whoever, I mean, Roman Reigns is a little bit more accurate now, but, you know, these people don't have just these ridiculously shredded hard abs and have all these lumps and, you know what I mean? They're not completely accurate, but I feel like in the modern era, they have the parts to make this happen, you know? I think these arms could be puffier. Using the Greatest Hits Legends British Bulldog arms would probably make this a little bit more accurate and look a little better, but they don't look bad by any stretch. He's got the black elbow pads in there. You have the pink heart. Pink crotch in there with the stripage, of course. White wrist tape going on the back, you guys can see there, but he does have his pink pants, which look really good. No knee pads. These are pinless legs, and then he does have his anvil boots in there, which I've always liked. I like Bret Hart and Jim Neidhart's boots. They always look good, and you have the anvil in there, so that's pretty clean, and he does have like the mismatched pink with the white boots. Low key, this figure's tough, man. Very tough figure. Decent ab crunch, tight waist, which is good. His, you know, shoulders can move all the way up. You have a good bu uh, butterfly joint in there, which is good. Good bicep swivel. He is double jointed arms, but the elbows will hinder it a little bit. But I'm not having any issues posing this guy around. You can do the splits, and you guys know he does have the drop down hip, but you can drop that down and get a really good kick forward right there, which is very nice. You love to see that. I'm still not on board with the drop down hips. I think that if they weren't as loose and they didn't get loose over time it'd be different and what I really don't like is how they pair the pinless joints with the drop down hips and then you get all kinds of trouble in my opinion I think you run into a lot of issues because this is so tight right here and then when you articulate the knee this moves down and then it just kind of gets into a wobbly mess a little bit and then I feel like it gets loose so that's just the one thing that I don't particularly like about modern WWE elites and ultimates is the pinless legs pinless arms don't have this issue it's the pinless knees they just just gets so tight that it shuts it all down and I don't know man it just really bothers me but before I guess uh you know the only the only gym the anvil like one-on-one -on -one comparison that I can make is my Santa Claus Elite and I say that because it is based on the Elite 44 gym the anvil except you know the head sculpt and the boots are different but hell I mean if we're if we're fighting fire with fire is this more accurate to the LJN he's got black boots on I don't know you can be the judge but yeah this is my Santa Braun custom this guy I used it for like a little bit puffier belly and arms and then I made like a custom Santa Claus Elite, if anybody remembers that. So, uh, if this head, I don't think this head pops off. Oh, it does pop off. So now look, 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 hold up, hold up. We're cooking, we're cooking here. Now I can throw on one of these anvil head sculpts. And now look at that. Now I can have a yelling Elite 44. Look at that. Now my, now my LJN is close. So there's that. But yeah, there's, there, you know, that's just a little, if you want to head swap that, it may sit a little high, as you guys can see. But it's not bad. But they also gave him jacked arms last time. But see, these aren't as cut. These have a little bit more puffiness look. They don't have the veins and all the cuts in them. But I definitely prefer this arm mold over this arm mold, but yeah, there's Jim the Anvil with his one-on-one -on -one comparison. So starting off with Bret Hart, man, his head sculpt, again, not the best likeness of all time, man. That's just how I feel about it. I just don't like these head sculpts particularly. Again, not egregious, but not the best. I kind of feel like it looks like Bret Hart's brother or something. You know, it just looks a little bit off. It doesn't quite capture him there. They're, they've certainly done better Bret Hart head sculpts, but you guys can chime in down below. Going down on the torso, this is something that's interesting, man. Am I seeing nipples on this guy? Look at the nipples there. There are nipples on this. Nipples on the figure. Look at that right there. That is a nipple. And I don't think that was on previous Bret Hart's, man. Am I? Are they going to add nipples to the figures now? But nonetheless, you do have this new singlet going on. Or not this new singlet. I do believe it's the same exact singlet mold. I do believe it's the same torso that we saw on the Legends Ultimate Edition from Target. Which I only have men on card now. Which sucks eggs. But he's got the heart on there. You know, black singlet heart right there on the stomach. You got the black elbow pads. He's got the singlet black on the back. And then he does have his white wrist tape. And then he has the stripes down the side. Which are always classic, man. Just a classic.
classic look of the pink. He does have knee pads in there. These are pinless legs again. He does have pinless legs. I can tell because they don't want to articulate. But then we have some of the best boots in the game, which is the Bret Hart boots here with the pink and black and white. Always remind me of Jordan 11s or something, and they just look so damn good, man. And what's cool is LA Knight actually mentioned that in the video, and I've talked about that on my channel for years, so it's cool that he kind of made that same revelation, and then he mentioned it and made his own Jordan 11 inspired boots, which are fire, by the way. I hope we get those in figure form, but yeah, these look really good as well. Now for Bret Hart, dude, one thing I've noticed about my figure is the bicep kind of just pops off. That's that's something that I definitely want to mention. I don't think the other one does that. Does the other one do that? Yeah, my other one doesn't do that, man. So my left arm just kind of pops off. It, it's not like egregious. It will pop back on, as you guys can see, but I don't know if there's like a mishap in there, but it will swivel. Like, it doesn't come off with just easiness, but it does pop off. If I, if I want to pop that arm off, I can pop that arm off. And then when you're articulating it, it can get in the way, but it does have a nice butterfly joint in here. You know, the diaphragm movement on Ultimate Editions doesn't work that good, but tight waist, not a pretty face, you know, but looking pretty good. Again, drop down hips are there. He can kick forward really well, you know, and the drop down hips does allow for a better sharpshooter. That's definitely a thing. However, outside of doing like sharpshooters or submission moves, it, I mean, it kind of, I don't know, man, I just am not the biggest fan of it because again, these legs are so like so tight and then you combine that with this and then like, I don't know, man, it, let me know down below. I've seen a lot of people agreeing with that take. I don't know what they can do about it, but it's certainly something that I want to address in the reviews because I think it's definitely necessary, but the figure looks damn good, man. I, I am appreciating this Bret Hart, but let's get into some Bret Hart figure comparisons and then we'll look at some, uh, well, I guess I don't really have. The, the Anvil is the only one. I, I, can, I can do one comparison though with these two and that is the Royal Rumble Jimmy Hart Elite with our Hart Foundation Coliseum Collection. This looks damn good together, man. And I don't know if he ever wore this jacket with these guys, but it still looks damn good. This is sick. I, I love the way this looks. So you have Jimmy Hart in the pink jacket to match your pink and black attack. I don't know, man. Looking pretty damn clean if you ask me. We also have the Hall of Fame Elite that you could use. So there's some different things you can pair with it, but these look really good all three up next to each other. I really like the Hart Foundation with Jimmy Hart here. So yeah, that's clean as hell. That's a good look. And I also put the, the new Legends 21, I think it is, head sculpt on here with the glasses. Smiling head sculpt. Chef's kiss right there. That's great stuff. And then for your Ultimate Edition Bret Hart comparisons, here is the Coliseum Collection in the middle. We have the first Ultimate Edition over here, which had abysmal head sculpts in my opinion. And then we have the Legends Target exclusive, which is definitely my favorite of the three Bret Hart Ultimates. And then we have the Monday Night War Ultimate Edition coming. And I promise in the Ultimate Edition Monday Night War Bret Hart review that we'll have on the channel eventually, I will have a loose version of this to showcase, but I turned mine into a sting and I haven't replicated it just yet. I may just open this one, but I didn't uh, I didn't do it for the review, so I do apologize. But this one's definitely my favorite. And just to give you guys a little shot there, so you guys can see. So there you go. There's all three of them up next to each other. Pick your, pick your favorite. This one's my favorite by far. The all pink is always money, but I don't know. This one wasn't the best. It didn't have the butterfly joints, but this one's not bad. I just, the Elite 43, if you're wondering why I'm not comparing this to my Elite 43 Bret Hart, it's because I actually sold that in that legendary lot that I sold off a long time ago to make some money to build the arena for the pick fit. And then for your other loose Bret Hart Elite comparisons to this Ultimate Edition Coliseum Collection Bret Hart, we have the Coliseum Collection in the middle. You have the Survivor Series Elite here, the Defining Moments Ringside Exclusive Elite, the WCW 2-Pack Elite with Goldberg and Bret Hart, the Elite 94 Chase, the regular edition Elite 94, and then the 2011 figure. This may be the re-release from WrestleMania, I think it was, with the pink wrist tape. But then I put some regular arms on there with black wrist tape to put the pink wrist tape onto Seth Rollins. So this is kind of what I'm left with. So I'm actually missing quite a few Bret Hart's, man. The original Defining Moments, the King of the Ring ringside exclusive that I traded a few years ago. There are some damn good Bret Hart's that I'm missing here. The ringside exclusive original figure. So we have quite the collection of Bret Hart's, man. We really do. It's kind of crazy. I'm actually intrigued with it. I need to track some of those down. So maybe that's something. I'm actually thinking of starting a series on the channel where we just try to track down every Mattel Elite for the collection, and that's like gonna be like a video series where we try to fill holes in the collection, but nonetheless, man, that wraps up our Bret Hart figure comparisons. All right, man, before we get out of here, I do want to rank all of the Coliseum collection figures that we have so far, and I guess that also includes Sergeant Slaughter, because I'm pretty sure they include him in the Coliseum collection stuff. You know what? I'll include him in one, and then I'll not include him, so I'll give you my ranking with him, and I'll give you my ranking without him. So starting out at the bottom for me, man, it is Series 3, George the Animal Steel, and again, you guys know my criteria for the ranking. It comes down to a slew of different things, but pretty much for the most part, it's excitement level for the figure, feel in hand, likeness to the character on TV, attention to detail or execution of details. And this figure does have a lot of cool details. The, the green tongue, I like the hair on the stomach and the arms. Honestly, that makes me want to rank it higher, but yeah, I mean, it's really tough when you match it up up next to the rest of the Coliseum figures, but I do have George the Animal Steel at my lowest, I believe. And again, just because a figure comes in at the bottom, like a figure has to come in at the bottom, and that's just the way it crumbles. I think all of these are solid figures, but when you put them in a ranking system, you know, there's going to be ones on the bottom and there's going to be ones on the top. And that's just kind of 
the, I mean, I don't really know what to say, man. Just because a figure comes into the bottom doesn't mean it doesn't have any redeeming qualities. And just because a figure is number one doesn't mean that it's without any faults whatsoever. But with that being said, next up in my ranking would be Jake the Snake from series number two. And George the Animal Seals from series number three, if you guys were unaware, that came with Roddy Piper. And Jake the Snake came with Rick Rude. Next up in my ranking would be Anvil. I like this figure a lot. I do like the head sculpts and things of that nature. I've always liked Anvil. But I, again, man, in comparison, he does fall here in my ranking. Next up, I am going to put Bret Hart. And really, I mean, these could be interchangeable. I don't like the arm size and like different things going on here, but the head sculpts are much better than Bret Hart's. So there's different things there. Coming in at number four, we have the Terry Funk from series number one. I like that figure a lot, man. I just think it's really cool. A really badass figure right there. Underrated. Coming in at number three, we have the Hulk Hogan from series number one Coliseum Collection. Very, very clean. I know it's pretty much a re-release, but damn, it's very well executed. They nailed that Hulk Hogan. Coming in at number two, I have the Rick Rude from series number two. Just a beautiful specimen of a figure. Love the head sculpts. Love the, you know, that ripped up torso. Love the robe. Just a very good execution of Rick Rude. And then my number one Coliseum collection, excluding Sergeant Slaughter, would be Roddy Piper from series number three. I love this figure. This is a beast. I, I just love it. This is a great figure right here, man. I love Roddy Piper. I like the head sculpts. He dressed this guy up. He's a great ultimate. Great attire. Execution is, is almost flawless. I, I love that Roddy Piper. Was waiting on an ultimate edition of him for a very long time, so having him is great. So this would be my ranking, I think, without Sergeant Slaughter. But then if I was including Sergeant Slaughter in this, I would probably slide him into number three or number four. I really like this. I love the execution of it. I think his arms are a bit jacked, but I don't know. I just think it kind of fits that character there. I, I don't know. I just, I love this. I think this is awesome. So yeah, Sergeant Slaughter would probably slide in at number three or number four. He might be number two if, if you know, they redid this figure with like some different things going on. Like, I don't like that it's just molded hands here. If these were gloved hands, like sculpted, it would help it. If it were pinless arms, it would probably help a little. Even though pinless arms don't really bother me that much. Yeah, Sergeant Slaughter would probably slide in right about here, maybe, if I were doing everything there. But yeah, that's my ranking, man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Damn good, man. Can't wait for the next Coliseum collection. Maybe that'll be revealed at WrestleMania World. But I'd say that about wraps up our Heart Foundation Coliseum Collection Series Number 4 Ultimate Edition Action Figure Review, man. I really do like these figures a lot. You know, the only thing that I'm really having an issue with is the combination of pinless leg joints being super tight combined with drop-down hips. And I think that really hinders the figures in a lot of ways, man. It, it really feels like the figures are going to snap. And I don't like that you have to kind of heat them up with a hairdryer or something like that in order to kind of, you know, make the legs a little bit malleable, you know? And if you heat it up too long, then it gets super loose. It's just like a weird thing there. So you really want to be careful when you're dealing with this. However, if you if you completely ignore that and you're careful with the figure and you kind of take it slow, they, I mean, these do capture likeness. I, I do like these Heart Foundation figures. I wish that Anvil's arms weren't so damn jacked, you know? I... You you know, I wish that they were a little bit more realistic, a little bit more puffy looking. Not as ripped up, because I'm pretty sure these are like the Braun Breaker arm mold or something like that. I can't remember the exact arm mold right off rip. It may, I don't think it, it could be the Mankind. It could be the Mankind arm mold. I think it is the Mankind arm mold. I think the British Bulldog Greatest Hits Legend arm mold would have been perfect. But outside of that, that's really the only issues I have with this set. I really love the World Tag Championships. Bret Hart's head sculpts, you guys know that, you know, that's kind of a struggle sometimes for Mattel. But they're not horrendous, I'd say. But I am enjoying these figures, man. I'm, en I'm enjoying, you know, posing them around, looking at them. I think they're pretty, uh, I think they're pretty good studs right here, man. Now, again, these are Mattel Creations exclusive. So if you guys want these, you want to go over to MattelCreations.com, where you can purchase this set. It's also going up with the Ultimate Edition Eric Bischoff set with the ring. All that's going up today, man. If you guys are interested in these, you definitely want to go grab them. 9 a.m. Pacific Standard today, 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time is where you can grab these Mattel creations, man. But a huge shout out again to Mattel for making this review possible and sending these figures out our way. I greatly appreciate them. I do appreciate their hospitality as always, but I think that is pretty much going to wrap up the review, man. Huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate you fellas over there, man. Thank you guys so very much for what you do, man. We did drop a really cool arena update yesterday or the other day actually, where we showed off this new added thing that we did to the arena that I think really adds a, some depths and realism to it. So they got to check that out. But that is pretty much going to wrap up the video, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later.